Hey everyone, Brandon and Brandon back again at the Kabuki Strength Lab and today we're going to be talking bench press setup. If you guys have been following our page, you've noticed that we've been talking in scapulohumeral rhythm, which is the relationship of the scapula to upper arm bone, specifically in your pressing and rowing patterns and why the scapula actually needs to move when you're pressing or rowing in any direction. And a lot of the comments that we got on that were, well, uh, how does that apply to bench press? So today we're going to be talking about bench press specifically and the role of the scapula in pressing both in stability and allowing your actual main propulsive muscles such as your triceps and pecs to function properly. So Brandon, go ahead and turn around and we're going to talk high level scapular function here. Go arm straight and the first thing that we want to talk about here is the differentiation between thoracic extension and or really global spinal extension which is more prevalent in the bench press uh, spinal extension and scapular retraction one of the things we find most commonly with lifters is they don't really know how to uh, distinguish between the two we need thoracic extension in Brandon uh, in order to transfer energy effectively from his legs to his upper body upper body and into the barbell but a lot of times lifters are going to go when we say scapular retraction they end up doing something like this and that does kind of mimic a bench press setup but the more that we arch in the bench press the more likely we are to slip into scapular elevation so when we are actually setting up for the bench press we need to figure out how we can actually extend our spine first and then we need our scapula to function all as a as a contributor to that but also to function independently of thoracic extension so in the bench press we see a couple common faults the first is brandon or any lifter, not Brandon, he doesn't actually have this problem, but locking their scapula into deep retraction and leaving it there as hard as they can. Now, Brandon is going to be able to go through a, a pressing pattern here. Try and leave this in one spot, Brandon, and go through a pressing pattern. But as we'll show you, because we're gonna do this live on the bench in a second, if Brandon leaves that scapula, and he didn't do a great job leaving it there, uh, as he pressed out of it. If Brandon leaves this scapula in position, his shoulder is still going to move, but it is going to assume way more load. That's also one of the biggest culprits of bicep tendonitis or bicep pain in the bench press. Uh, if we have a significant arch in the bench, we are also going to see this dip into upward elevation of the scapula or that scapula rising to the ears. And that is very common when we see people dumping at the bottom of the bench press. So what we want out of Brandon here in his scapula is to anchor himself in scapular depression. And then we want him to be able to get into deep scapular retraction at the bottom of the bench. Go ahead, Brandon. Row into yourself like a press. And he needs to be able to press out of this into scapular protraction if we want him to actually use his pecs and triceps. If you don't go into scapular protraction, and we're not talking about over pressing in the bench press at all, there's always a range. We're certainly not talking about in range protraction in the bench press, but this is certainly protraction in the position that I'm in right now. And if we want to use our triceps and pecs, we have to get to that point because if we don't, we will be left in this bent elbow position, which will utilize less of our triceps and will completely diminish how much of our pecs we're using. Brandon, go ahead and get on the bench and let's show, show this uh, actually on the bench press. Get in a decent arch position. We're not really going to talk about the global setup of the bench press. We find that in Instagram videos that smaller, more digestible things are usually best for, uh, for Instagram TV. Going on rack. So the first fault that we mentioned was scapular elevation or the shoulder to the ear and the scapula riding up the back. Very, very common in lifters who have big arches or very common in lifters who have jacked up T-spines who are locked in kyphosis. This is going to present with a very flared elbow position. Go ahead, Brandon, flare your elbows pretty hard. And at the bottom, we're gonna see Brandon dump onto his chest forward. That's that scapula not being able to control and range retraction in dumping over the top. This is very common in lifters, again, who have T-spines that are really locked up, but we're gonna be able to see from the side, Brandon's uh, wrists dip in front of his elbows at the very bottom. Go ahead and show it again, Brandon. Dump, press out. Good. This is neither a bench that was ever locked, or we might see this in individuals who are locked in scapular retraction, but that's going to look more commonly like a broken elbow position. Retract as hard as you can right here, Brandon. Anytime we see someone who locks himself into scapular retraction as hard as possible, they're going to feel a ton of tightness in their upper back, and it's going to feel very stable until they go to action press. 
This is very common or it's commonly seen with a bent elbow position and an over reliance on the bicep. That's where your bicep pain comes from in the bench press. This is also going to present with people who have very poor thoracic mobility because they can't actually extend to get into that position. So they actually have to end up dumping at the bottom of the bench anyway. This is also going to be common. Go and show the uh, complete rep here, Brandon. Down. Elbows are going to flare at the bottom again, just like the other fault. And then there's going to be a massive flaring off of the chest. What we want to have happen is for the scapula to move through three different phases of its actual function. We want it to start in depression. This nice, this is not scapular retraction. There might be a, a small degree of scapular retraction, but it is certainly scapular depression. As Brandon goes through the rep, go ahead, he's getting into scapular retraction very, very deeply and at near end range, depending on how big your arch is. As Brandon presses out, just as the scapula moved into retraction, it's going to move out of it while being anchored in depression and moving into slight protraction. If Brandon ever wants to use his pecs and his triceps, he has to have that scapula glide right out from that retracted state at the top. Um, other than that, there's a few ways that we can train this. Go ahead and relax here, Brandon. One of the most effective ways to do it is through your seated rowing exercises. Chances are you're going to have to go much, much lighter than you normally would, and you shouldn't be just heaving weight in thoracic extension. So if you want to improve this, and you don't want to get super technical with different drills, do your rowing exercises better. And that means not locking yourself in extension and rowing from there, because that's going to turn into this pattern once again, Lock your trunk in a semi-neutral position and focus on getting into deep shoulder extension and scapular retraction at the bottom while protracting at the top. As always, if you guys have follow-up questions or comments, or if you want another video on scapular function and pressing and rowing patterns, hit us in the comments or send us a DM. Brandon and Brandon out.